All right, Algebra 1B students, welcome to our first video of Chapter 8, Part 1 of Lesson 8, 1, on adding and subtracting uh, polynomials. And for today, we're going to focus solely on this thing called a monomial. Uh, mono means 1. So we're going to look at uh, expressions with exactly one term today, okay? And a monomial uh, can be any number of things. It could be a real number, it could be a variable, or it could be a combination of a real number and one or more variables uh, with whole number exponents. Okay, so multiple pieces here to classify what is a monomial, and I want each of these added to your notes. It's important that all exponents that you see be whole numbers, otherwise this is not considered a monomial. Uh, it could be any of these three things, a real number, some combination of variables, uh, like we see here with our x and y together, or it can be a combination of numbers and variables. Right, so please add that definition of monomial to your notes. And down below, I've listed a whole bunch of examples of what a monomial is. Right, so a monomial could be a number, like 18. That is a monomial, just a number. Uh, it could be just a variable, just a letter, like variable z. It could be a combination of a number, negative 4, and a variable x, as long as, once again, we have whole number exponents, right? Whole number exponents. Uh, we see the same thing in the next one. There we have two different variables, one of which has a whole number exponent. So 2.5 is a number, x is a variable, and y to the third is a variable with whole number exponents. Uh, and if we want to see that all of our variables always have whole number exponents, if we don't see an exponent on this x right here, we can assume that that is x to the first power, correct? So x to the 1, 1 is definitely a whole number. Uh, so that is most definitely considered a monomial. Both of our variable pieces have whole number exponents, meaning no fractions. Right. And then finally, here we have uh, a division. Letter A divided by 3. Uh, and that's okay, because really that's the same as 1 third times by A, which is again to the first power. So all of those are examples of monomials. Hopefully you can see why each one is a monomial. So part of your homework is going to be to decide, is that a monomial or is it not a monomial? Uh, the other part uh, of our lesson today deals with what is called the degree of a monomial. The degree of a monomial is the sum of the exponents of its variables. Okay? Please add that definition to your notes as well. The sum of the exponents of the variables. The degree of a constant uh, meaning no variable is zero. If there is no variable, your degree is zero. And the number zero itself doesn't get a degree. It doesn't have one. So I should never ask you what is the degree of zero because there is not a degree for the number zero. Okay? Uh, Hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully you have added that definition, degree of a monomial, to your notes. Now we will look at the type of questions you will see in your practice problem set. Okay? Here it is. What is the degree of each monomial? So your job here is to look at just the variable pieces, just the letters, and add up all the exponents on those letters. Okay? So for example, in letter A, 5x. Well, I know that 5x really is like 5x to the first power, right? 5x to the 1. 
So the exponent that's on my x is a 1. And since that's my only letter, that's my only exponent. So my degree is just 1. 3 and 1. Uh, in the next example, things get a little bit more complicated. So 6x to the third, y to the second. I see two letters there, and I see two different exponents on them, the 3 and the 2. So I will add those together, 3 plus 2, and my degree is 5. Okay. 3 plus 2, my exponent on the x, plus the exponent on my y. All right. And uh, finally, example C, 4, doesn't have any letters or any variables attached to it, which means my degree is 0. There is no variable there for the degree to be counted. All right? Now, your job then is to look at the very bottom of page 486. Page 486. Uh, and complete these three check uh, problems. What is the degree of each one of these? A, B, and C. I would like a degree for each one of those. Uh, and I'd like that at the beginning of class tomorrow. Show me that along with the rest of your notes. All right, so pause the video, take a look at those three problems, find me the degree of each one, and when you're ready, come back and we will move on to the next page and the other part of our uh, lesson. The other part of our lesson is to be able to add and subtract monomials by adding and subtracting what they call like terms. Now, hopefully we all know what like terms are, but just as a quick refresher, like terms have the same variable factors. Exactly the same variable factors. Exactly the same. Okay. To identify like terms, all we have to do is look at the letters in each one of those terms. Okay, so the numbers don't matter, just the letters. For example, 7a and negative 3a, even though they have different numbers, the letter portion or the variable factor is just a and a. So are they like terms? Well, a and a are exactly the same, so the answer is yes. Yes. Okay. Next, we have 4x squared and 12x squared. Again, the number is different, but my letter pieces are x to the second power and x to the second power. Are those exactly the same? The answer is yes. They are like terms. Our next example, 6ab and negative 2a. A, B, and A, not the same. So the answer there is no, they are not like terms. All right? And finally, X, Y squared, and X squared, Y. Uh, in the first, I have an X with two Ys, and in the second, I have two Xs with one Y. Are those exactly the same? No. So they are not like terms. No, they're not. Okay. Now, the reason this is important is because if they are not like terms, like these two examples over here, then you cannot add or subtract them. You cannot add or subtract non-like terms, okay? Now, when they give us uh, problems to do in our problem set, they will almost always be like terms because they want us to be able to add and subtract, okay? Uh, and adding and subtracting is relatively simple. Because if we have like terms, and we want to add or subtract them, all we have to do is add or subtract the numbers that come in front of those variable pieces or those letters. Okay? The uh, letters themselves should not change at all. For example, here in letter A, uh, 3x squared plus 5x squared is 3 plus 5 is 8, 8x eight squared. My x squared did not change at all. But 3 plus 5 gives me 8x squared as my answer. In letter B, we see 4x to the third y minus x to the third y. Right? 
Now what we should notice is there is no number in front of this term, x to the third y. If there is no number, we assume that that should be a 1. Okay? If there is no number, assume it's a 1. 4 x to the third y's minus 1 x to the third y's. 4 minus 1 gives me 3. My letters don't change at all. It's x to the third y. 3 x to the third y. Okay. Now, your job is to check uh, yourself by doing those two problems. Okay. What is the sum here? What is the difference here? I would like to see both of those answers when you come to class tomorrow as well. Uh, once you have mastered those two, you are ready for your practice problem set. That is all I have for you tonight. Have a wonderful evening.